I want to take it down a little bit here um, because there's some sadness in the force. The, um, as you know, Donald Trump is not just a threat to, well, humanity, humanity. <laughs> but he has been causing such incredible dissension amongst right-wing talkers. It is, um, it's pretty tough to talk about this stuff. Uh, as you know, Sean Hannity the other day started to call out people who he was going to blame if Donald Trump lost. And, um, well, his boy, Pat Gray, <laughs> at 1.15 a.m. <laughs> in the morning, wrote an open letter on Facebook to Sean Hannity. I'm going to read a little bit of it. Open letter to Sean Hannity. Grow up and just admit it. You've been in the bag for Donald J. Trump since day one, all caps. And everyone, all caps, knows it. You've bent over backwards, all caps, for the man every step of the way. And everyone, all caps, knows it. You attack Ted Cruz regularly while defending Trump at every turn with religious fervor. And everyone knows it. Yeah. I love the fact that he's saying with religious fervor. Isn't uh, Pat the like the full on like huge Mormon guru that has been like, I don't know, takes, I don't know. You're really going to claim that we're, quote, sore losers who can't let the fact that Ted Cruz lost go? Apparently, Sean, you can't understand opposition to someone based on principles, all caps. <laughs> You've excused everything Trump has said and done in the past and the present. He uses ellipses a lot. A lot of little dot, dot, dot. Tom Wolf. Oh. You certainly didn't do that for Barack Obama, dot, dot, dot. And their policies were, in fact, still are quite similar. Dot, dot, dot. You, no. No, dot, dot, dot. No, he's, I think he got tired of, like, he's, he front loads all the uh, ellipses. He, and he the, front loaded the ellipses. <laughs> You've excused the fact that he was a Hillary Clinton donor, not to mention a Clinton Foundation donor. Now Trump's railing against both. You've excused his health care position. <laughs> he said last September. He's, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe he has a program that randomly capitalizes words. That he'd have the federal government. So federal oh, is you not got, cap. You got to cap government, yeah, though. Yeah, but That's wouldn't important. you cap federal? Oh, definitely. Instead of government? No, I do both. If okay. you don't believe in you government, then why do you capitalize it? Pay for health care, dot, dot, dot. Even if it cost them votes, exclamation. Uh, that system is single payer health care. If I'm not mistaken, dot, dot, dot. Which is worse than Obamacare. I thought you were against Obamacare, Sean. Weird. A couple elections ago, while you were doing the stop the Hillary train countdown or whatever it was, your buddy, Donald, was funding her. Weird. Oh, and he was telling Americans she was doing a fantastic job and make a great president. Weird. While you, like us, were railing against Planned Parenthood, Donald was telling Americans that PP should remain federally funded. Weird. While you've been insisting that Trump isn't flip-flopping on issues, he's flip-flop on so many issues that he doesn't even know where he stands on them. His latest immigration softening is a perfect example of that. Well, I maybe mean, wrote that too early. The man who's been proclaiming they have to go is now talking about the humane path to citizenship for them instead. <laughs> I'm surprised and, it wasn't humane. And you're okay with that? Weird. I love someone saying, like, how could you support someone who wanted to do something that's humane? Seriously, Sean, you've been exposed here. You can continue to live in your, quote, I've been fair and impartial this whole time. I don't know what you're talking about, dot, dot, dot. I just offered everyone a chance to come on the air, quote, 
world if you want, but everyone knows better. You can blame Glenn and everyone else who is stuck to their constitutional principles for the pending Hillary election victory if that makes you feel better, but everyone knows better. We told you the guy couldn't win. We begged and pleaded for a better candidate with conservative constitutional pr principles. There were seven of them <laughs> who would have been great choice, and 16 that were better than Trump. But you and so many others, for whatever reason, had to have Trump. Weird. Join us in reality, my friend. You own her, and everyone knows it. Wow. Well, so that, that was, was a hilarious letter. Yes. Stu really knows how to create a Facebook post. <laughs> Now, so Stu, Trump's sidekick, excoriates to use a Trump, I mean, a Hannity word. He always used excoriates. Yeah, he definitely, that He was... learned that word like four, like three or four years ago. And uh, somewhere between like um, that and I think throw under the bus. Like the first four years of the Obama administration, throw under the bus was his favorite saying. And then excoriate. So- after Hannity excoriated them, and then Stu excoriated Hannity, Glenn, Glenn, who's far more centered, makes an appeal for peace. Here it is. And some of you people are acting like sore loser, mm -hmm. crybaby, bad sports, pick your toys oh, up. Oh, I should and stop. I should say. This is first we're going to hear Hannity and this is uh Glenn Beck on his radio show playing the Hannity thing and then trying to be the bigger <laughs> the bigger guy. And some of you people are acting like sore loser, mm -hmm. cry baby, bad sports, pick your toys up and go home type of people. Mm. Yeah, type of people. Now, my promise to my audience and March of 2015 was I'm going to give as much airtime to all the candidates on radio and TV and let the people decide. Uh -huh. and, then and they decided in record it. numbers, Please Donald Trump. Stop it. And then I said in March of 2016 that I'm going to support the nominee, and some of you are going to be emotional, and I knew that this was going to happen. Oh. Well, let me just say to all of you, and that includes the commentator class, that includes the Jonah Goldberg class, that includes, you know, radio talk show host Glenn Beck is like on a, it's a holy war for him at this point. I mean, he's, he's off the rails, attacking me every day, blaming me for Trump. Okay, stop. Well, no, uh, I was... Stop, stop, stop. Let me please. Pause it for one second. I, I just I have to just say about the Jonah Goldberg class, that's the one where all the kids eat the Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're given trust funds and jobs at National Review. Like, there's a yeah. lot of these people. <laughs> there's, there's, there's only one person in that class, but... Gets a lot of attention. All right, so here's Glenn. He's just, uh, stop, stop, I can't hear it anymore. Stop, stop. Good. Attacking me every day, blaming me for Trump. Okay, stop. Well, no, uh, I was... Stop, stop, stop. Let me please. <sighs> I actually had a hard time sleeping last night after that. My son said to me, but Dad, just a few months ago, he stood next to you and looked me in the eye and said... I want you to remember that your dad is one of the biggest patriots in this country. <sighs> he said, did he mean that or not? And I said, yes, he did. We are just in disagreement right now, and we're having problems because all of us feel like we're trapped in a barn fire. Pause and it so for one second. Pause it for one second. Wait a second. So he, he, his son is listening to Sean Hannity. Wow, that is a one effed up family. God. Did he mean that or not? And I said, yes, he did. We are just in disagreement right now, and we're having problems because all of us feel like we're trapped in a barn fire. And so we don't know what to do. I, uh, I gotta, I, stop, stop the show. For, I need him. I need a moment. Wow. 
So there it is, folks. There's a barn fire. And I, uh, I only wish that we could actually go and watch. When I saw, oh, I guess we are. <laughs> when I saw that review from New Progressive Voices or New Whatever Progressives giving us 6 out of 10 on a 10-point scale on Progressive, and it called us <laughs> neoliberal. <sighs> I looked at Sam in the eye, and I just said, I think we've all lost our way. Myla came up to me, and she said, Daddy... Can I watch an episode? <laughs> what? I just, uh, they, I, <laughs> Pretty Little Liars just came out with a new episode. I, I want to watch, uh, the, I want to find out who AD is. <laughs> oh, don't you care about, no, I don't care. <laughs> I feel like we're trapped in a barn fire. <laughs> I feel like that's the like, most clear-headed thing I've heard Glenn Beck say. I don't think he's talking about us. We're not. Uh, in the no, barn I fire. know, but we're all tra- we, we're all trapped in a barn fire. I think America's a bit of a barn fire. Yeah, everything's a barn fire. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. And what you do in a barn fire is just yell at everyone. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you put so much hay in here? (laughs) All right. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast. Like us on Facebook. And just generally enjoy us.